Hey, what's going on everybody? If you caught my last top 10 video, the number one thing as far as printer upgrades that I listed was a part cooling fan. And I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into that as to why a part cooling fan is important and the different types of fans that are out there for you to use. So we're going to dig into uh, a lot of different things here. We're gonna dig into the fan types. We're gonna dig into how you hook a fan up and everything that's involved with getting a fan to run on your printer. So with that, part cooling fans and how to get them to work. So why do I need a part cooling fan? Simple answer being part cooling fan during PLA more specifically helps cool down that plastic as soon as it's laid down, which keeps it nice and sharp, keeps the layers nice and crisp, instead of allowing the latent heat from the, uh, the melted plastic to melt layers below it or to continue to kind of sag down. So a part cooling fan when it comes to PLA and a couple of other materials is crucial for the best quality prints. It's also very important to have a part cooling fan on if you want to do bridging. And if you're not familiar with bridging, it's basically printing from point A to point B with no supports underneath. So going from here to here. Basically with a fan, if you're able to crank that fan up to 100% during bridging, it'll help that filament cool as it's being dragged across and you'll get better bridging results instead of saggy nastiness. So I wanna go into what kind of fan should you be use using as a cooling fan? Cause there are a couple types out there. Um, first, let's talk about your standard axial fan. Now an axial fan is this little guy right here. Um, it's the fan that you see most standard on just about everything 3D printing. You could see it in your electronics cabinet. Uh, you'll usually find one of these on the hot end slash cold end, cooling down the heat sink. Um, most of the time you'll see a little heat sink like this on most of your kits. And this fan goes on top like that. And this is just taking air and bringing it away from the hot end or the cold end side of the hot end. So that way you don't get uh, filament melting where it shouldn't be melting. Anyway, these are great for that. An axial fan moves a lot of air in a, a short little package. But the problem with an axial fan is it doesn't have much pressure. Since the fins are designed the way they are and you know it's made for more of a larger volume space it's not really meant for pressure and when we get into fan ducts and fan cooling we're looking for more pressure than we are area uh, that being said i've seen fan cooling setups that utilize a couple of these fans just spread out kind of like uh kind of like this over the hot end and this is just straight on cooling without using a fan duct and that's fine um, the only problem with this is it can cause warping if not uh, used properly because it's cooling too much of the print area. Um, axial fans also are great for uh, cooling various parts of your printer like stepper drivers, uh, like your electronics cabinet, etc. But if you want to use one, let's say for a, friend, a shroud like this, then you probably need to upgrade to a little bit more robust axial fan. I still don't recommend using axial fans for this, but if you're going to, a uh, 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter, and your normal part fan is about 10 millimeters thick, and this is about 20 millimeters thick, um, which that just gives you bigger blades, and actually they're quicker, and a little more RPM, more CFM, which is uh, your flow rating. And so yeah, if you're gonna do this, you can use a fan like that and get more air pressure out of it. Still nothing close to what you're gonna get out of our next fan. Now our next fan <coughs> is your standard blower fan slash uh, radial fan. And it is basically a series of slats on a wheel and a very specific exit point. So these guys spin around, and I'm going the wrong way, and they spin around and they're pushing air out a 
very specific, very narrow spot. And these are blower fans and they are for pressure. These are what you want to use when you're using some kind of a fan shroud or fan duct. For example, the DIII cooler that I was using in my last video would not work very well with an axle style fan. You've got to have a decent amount of pressure going through the ducting in here and to make it out of all the holes and maintain decent pressure. So they just use a blower fan like that. Now these blower fans are a little bit cumbersome. They have to stick out a lot and you see a lot of uh, uh, different applications where they mount them vertically like that and then duck down to a, a ring of some type and that's perfectly fine as long as the air gets where it needs to go. Now that being said you can use this kind of fan on this kind of shroud. Obviously not like that. On Thingiverse, I'll post a link below, but there is a Thingiverse object that takes this fan and converts it to the space of a 40 centimeter axial fan. So you can get the same, you can get the pressure from a blower fan into the fan duct. Now it's not the best case scenario, but it still might be a little bit better than using an axial fan. So with that being said, that's the basic fan rundown and why you use one fan over the other kind of fan. Uh, as far as hooking a fan up, most boards have a spot for a part fan. This is the uh, S-Base board that I've been messing with and obviously I, ha I don't have it hooked up to anything, but you've got lots of different outputs on here and people are always asking, you know, where do I hook up a part fan on here? Well, you hook them up to one of these outputs. You usually have an output for a heated bed and then you've got an output for a couple of uh, hot ends but then there's usually a fan output there on this one it's right here so you've got a, an output for a heated fan and that is a, a pwm output so you can control the speed of the fan uh, through your slicer basically so as you learn how to use a part fan and how certain layers need certain uh, fan speeds and how some layers may not need fan speeds at all like your beginning layer your first layer uh, you can control all that via slicer and g-code and i'll show you a little bit of that here in a second but just to to put all this to rest you're going to want to find one of these terminals next to your uh, your hot end outputs and your bed output it'll be labeled usually fan so that's where you want to go with your part fan now the fan that goes on to your hot end to keep it cool that you want to hook straight into 12 volts DC so straight onto your power supply this you want running all the time that's just to keep that uh, heat sink back there nice and cool and keep filament from getting all mushed up and causing jamming so this you don't want to hook up to that fan output you want this running all the time just to clear that up too um, there's a few people out there who have hooked these things up to be temperature controlled and that's fine if you can do that reliably then no problem i just find it safer to keep it on all the time straight 12 volts going to it that way i don't have to worry about it so you've got your fan hooked up to your board now you got to get it to work so i hear a lot of things about like enabling fans in the firmware and so forth and so on and it's pretty easy. I'm going to walk you through that here in a second. Um, basically, it boils down to what kind of motherboard you're using, what kind of controller board you're using, and what outputs you have selected. Um, then past that, you use your slicer of choice, whether that's Cura or Simplify 3D, Slicer, any of those uh, you know that we use readily will handle a cooling fan. And I'll walk you through a couple of those examples as well. So let's take a look at how to get a cooling fan working. Setting up the fan in the firmware is fairly straightforward. You just need to get into this configuration H tab. You need to scroll down here to where the motherboard is. Now believe it or not, this is pretty much the only thing you need to mess with when it comes to a cooling fan inside of your firmware. You need to have the motherboard set correctly to your motherboard and what kind of setup you're looking for. So. The easiest way to kind of figure that out, go over to the side here, and we need to find boards.h, right there. 
Now boards.h will give you a list of the motherboards and their corresponding numbers. So you might actually have the full board name in place of the number. I just like to put the number there. But this number corresponds to the board and then you get a slight description over here on the side as to what that board is configured to do. So you see here that I'm on 33. And 33 is a ramps 1.3, 1.4, with the power outputs being extruder, fan, that's the key, and bed. And then you can see you've got other options here, extruder, extruder, bed, extruder, fan, fan, extruder, extruder, fan. So if I'm just running a standard setup with one extruder, a part fan, and a heated bed on my ramps, or an MKS board in this case, uh, you want to use motherboard number 33 which is exactly what I've got set up right here. With that, you are pretty much done with the firmware side of things. So you just compile this, send it to your uh, board, and you're off to the races as far as having a properly configured firmware. Now, as far as controlling the fan, I'm going to hop into Cura here. So with Cura, and I'll get the S3D here in a second, with Cura, in order to enable the fan, it's this simple. There you go. Your cooling fan is now enabled inside of Cura. So you can tweak some settings using the little uh, dot 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 over here on the side which opens up some advanced settings. You can tell it what height you want it to kick the fan on full blast. You can tell it what the fan speed minimum is. That will be the speed to which the fan runs at its lowest time. And then the max fan speed, which I've got set to 100 right here, but you can have it set to 80 if you don't want the fan running 100%. And that's pretty much that. Now you can open your expert settings and kind of take a look here. And you've got the same settings here, you'll notice, as well. So if there's anything else inside of these expert settings that uh, you want to mess with, it's a good place to do it. Anyway, that is Cura. Super simple, right? So Simplify 3D gives us a few more options and some more flexibility when it comes to a cooling fan. We get inside the process here and we hop over to the cooling tab. Now you'll see that you're able to set the fan speed based on the layer number. And that is quite handy, especially if you want to uh, lay down a nice hot first layer and then adjust your fan speed layer after that. So I'm on my ABS tab, and as you can see for ABS, I'm not really using the fan. So I'm going to hop over to PLA, and you'll see that on layer 2, I hop my fan up to 90%, which is almost full blast. Now, it's a pretty powerful fan, and that's why I only run it at 90. And uh, if I wanted to, I could even run it at, say, 50%. And it's that simple. You can add set points. So if... Let's say that it's a spire of some type and you want the top part of the spire to be, uh, or let's, let's take a look at the Benchy here. So let's say that the Benchy model here, we want the fan on full blast for this portion over here and above. So I'm going to take it to about layer, well it depends on what uh, layer height you're cutting, but let's say layer 50 is where that starts and I want to kick on 100% right there. Add that set point, let's see at layer 50. Fans on 100%. You'll see some other options over here. Adjust fan speed for lower layers. Any layer below 15 seconds. Uh, it allows you to slow your print down. So that is part of the cooling process, even though it doesn't technically use the fan, but it does help the filament have uh, enough time to cool down. Then you have your fan overrides down here. So increase fan speeds for layers below 45 seconds. You can adjust that and bridging fan speed override that's that's a big one so i would recommend that even if you're using abs over here that you kick your bridging fan speed override on so that way if you do have a bridge it does kick the fan on for that time that it's doing the bridge which is important even with abs to get a good bridging quality so that's the basics of uh, simplify 3d and the way it handles the fan now you can control fan manually using uh, the M106 command and uh, you can just put an M106 S and then a number and that'll kick on the fan 0 through 255 and uh, you can control it manually that way 
But that's the basics of controlling the fan in Cura and Simplify 3D. It's pretty much the same for other slicers out there. And that will get you going. And that's about it. You should have a fully operational fan now, a part fan that you can turn on and off and adjust the speed as needed to help improve your print quality. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is primarily for PLA, but it can be used with wood fill, which is a form of PLA. It can also be used with ABS, but very cautiously. ABS likes to warp a little bit more than PLA, especially if it has a breeze. So a fan on at maybe about 25% on very intricate areas with ABS is good, but I wouldn't run it much higher than that with ABS or you will, you know, you'll risk warping and you don't want that. None of us want that. Anyway, that's what I've got for you as far as fans. I hope that this cleared some things up and I hope that you can get a fan on your printer if it doesn't have one already. And if it does have one already, I hope that some of these tips uh, help you to get the proper fan in place and get your print quality nice and perfect. So with that, thanks for watching. If this video was helpful in any way, please hit that like button and also please hit that subscribe button down below. So thanks for watching and happy printing.